We all care about something. But where would you go to find the most deliberate display of care? Would you go to a state-of-the-art health care facility? Or perhaps a beautiful, well-cared-for garden? Or maybe a museum for the preservation and care of great works of art? We all care about something. I don't think you'd have to look far. I think that we can find extraordinary examples of care right in the back parking lot, yeah, next to the garbage, inside the recycle dumpster. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the recycle dumpster, it's much more, much more than the place just to go and throw out your old cardboard, paper, plastic, and aluminum. You see, the recycle dumpster is really a container filled with wisdom, ancient as the Tao, <laughs> unexpected leadership, and acts of extraordinary care. Because recycling is an act of caring, and I really care about that. <laughs> In addition to my work at City Year, an education-focused nonprofit fueled by national service, a couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to start a small business, and so I chose recycle collecting. Um, and with any small business, especially when you're first getting started, right, it, you have to be really hands-on. And I was okay with that. I remember one day, hmm, I was way out in the country, in a backwoods lot, standing waist deep in a recycled dumpster. Now, I remember this particular time because it had rained the night before. Yeah, and I'm standing in this recycled dumpster. It's a steaming 100 degrees. And there's, surrounding me was all this, was a soggy, wet cardboard, and spiders, and frogs, and uh, an assortment of other little critters. Now, I was horrified. I'm like, uh, what if somebody sees me? Where's my dignity? Where is my pride? Now, the fact is that this was, you know, there was nobody around for miles, but still, I remember I looked up into the pine trees and I lamented dramatically. Gail, 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 why, why in the world are you doing this? And then I heard my own voice answer the question, I am doing this because people really care. And that is the moment that everything shifted. You see, what I discovered as a recycle collector is that something kind of mysterious happens in the workplace environment if you have a person who is really passionate about recycling. The folks that would contact us, they weren't the senior leaders of the business, okay? But they also, surprisingly, weren't the folks from facilities, ground, or maintenance. From what I could tell, there was no work-related reason that some of these individuals should be contacting us at all. I mean, I can assure you that the phrase, go green, was not in their job duty or responsibility. But yet and still, they're the ones calling around, asking for information, even requesting a quote. Now that got my attention. I started to ask them about this. I would ask them all, and they all said exactly the same thing. I believe recycling is really important, and I think we should definitely be recycling here. So there you have it. They really cared so they were compelled to take action, and the next thing you know, they would just lead the charge. I mean, it was fascinating. When you think about what these individuals were able to accomplish, their willingness to sort of take this cause, and then they would push it through this maze of indifference and resistance, and they would champion it all the way up to the top. 
They did not ask for permission to lead. They were not elected nor appointed. They felt authorized to take action simply because they cared. And because they cared so deeply, they were able to powerfully lead and their leadership inspired others along the way. I mean, it certainly inspired me. So now I'm starting to think, is this really just about recycling? I mean, is there something else going on here? So I started to take a closer look, and this is what I saw. If the workplace environment had no recycle program in place, these were often the same individuals that would just take the initiative, step up to the plate, and do the recycling themselves. And they would take this action even when it wasn't required. There was no financial reward or incentive to do so. And for the most part, their actions were not even acknowledged, but none of that mattered. They would take the action anyway, even though they could not tell you which tree they had helped to save, or where this aluminum can would end up five years from now. They took the action because they cared and they believed that this action was gonna have a great impact on the world. And so they would faithfully take this action day after day after day. Now I understand almost everybody agrees, right, that recycling is good for the environment, yes? But not everybody does it. And certainly not everybody cares deeply about it. So what makes us care deeply about anything at all? Why do we donate our money to support our favorite charities? Why do we volunteer? Why do we do service? Why do we tutor and mentor that struggling student and what does any of that have to do with recycling? I, I just felt that there was some sort of a connection. I just couldn't find that missing link. And then one day, I found it. Written on the pages of that ancient Chinese philosophy, the Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching, written in what, the sixth century BC? The Tao Te Ching is still one of the most translated works of literature in the world. And there it was. Three little sentences, and I was perfectly clear. The Tao is an empty vessel. It is used but never filled, oh, the unfathomable source of 10,000 things. The Tao is an empty vessel. Okay, so if it's empty, that means there's nothing there. And it is completely and totally reduced. It is used but never filled. Whoa. So if it's never filled, it can certainly be reused. Oh, the unfathomable source of 10,000 things. Yeah, that's a very good definition for what it means to recycle. I could almost see those green chasing arrows of the recycle emblem sort of hovering above the page. This is reduce, reuse, recycle, and this is us. When you strip away indifference, when you cut through our complacency, when we get rid of all of this garbage that is weighing us down, then we are reduced to our highest calling. And that is our care. And our care is just like the vessel of the Tao. It is there, it is always available to us. When we lead, when we take action from that place, that's when we can create things we never dreamed were possible. So that's my theory. I call it the Tao of reduce, reuse, recycle. 
Is this about recycling? Mm, yes, yes it is. But it's also about leadership and possibilities and people. People who really care. People like Sally. Sally worked at the same insurance company for over 20 years. And every day, she's the person that would go in and make sure that the office ran efficiently and that everybody else had what they needed to do their jobs. But every night, Sally is that person that would go around to all the offices, collect the cans and the bottles, put them in her car, and take them home to recycle them. And my friend Patrick, Patrick is a retired lieutenant colonel who spends all his time volunteering at his church. Now, Patrick has created one of the most strategic faith-based recycle programs I had ever seen. And he enlisted like-minded volunteers from the congregation, and they got together and created this sort of zero-waste policy because to them, recycling is stewardship, and stewardship of the earth is their ministry. I met Bill and Helen at a college and Cheryl at a little elementary school. But these educators felt that this is not a subject that's just left to the classroom. It is a core value. But how can our schools, our institutions of higher learning, expect our children, our future leaders, to learn these values when they fail to recycle themselves? So Sally and Patrick and Bill and Helen and Cheryl, they didn't just care about recycling. They felt personally responsible. They could no more turn their backs and walk away from this issue than you or I could turn our backs from a friend in need. When I met them, when I began to understand everything they had to go through to make this happen, then I became an extension of their care, and I felt responsible to honor it. So you see, it was their caring that kept me in that recycle dumpster. This is the Tao of reduce, reuse, recycle. This is what it looks like to be your caring and take action for good. And recycling is the, the perfect analogy because it demonstrates this type of caring that inspires you to keep taking action over and over again. But recycling is only half of the story. Here's what I mean. Let's just fast forward and say that the recycle movement wins. Yay! And we have this glorious planet that we're going to pass on to our future generations. But what if at the same time, what we are handing to our future generations is a world where caring is at risk? Because we have squandered and wasted opportunities to take action for good. Impossible? Did you ever think we'd be living at a time when 46% of our beautiful rivers and lakes would be too polluted to swim or fish? Or that every second, an acre and a half of forest land is eliminated, chopped down, and destroyed? If the way that we treat each other is but a mirror reflection of the way we treat the earth. Are we at risk of becoming a care-less society? But the story doesn't have to end here because we all care about something. So what's next? How about this? We use the recycled dumpster as a powerful affirmation. Yes, the same recycled dumpster that you and I see every day. That recycled dumpster reminds me that my caring creates the world in which I want to live. So how about you? 
What do you care about? Because that's your aluminum. And like aluminum, the possibilities are endless. I want to thank you for recycling, and I appreciate your care.